Hello everyone and thanks for joining us once again in Transforming the World Through Reflections. Today I'm in the company of a wonderful, wonderful person, beautiful friend, Rafael Lopez Barrantes. He's an actor. He is faculty in the theater school at California Institute of the Arts, the community where we met and continue to work together. And he is uh, the creator of what's called the Barrantes Voice System. And this system uh, is one that really captures the attention of, of the actors at our mm -hmm. school. So, Rafael, thank you so much for being here. You're welcome. You're welcome, I am Elisa. so glad that we're going to have this conversation, which will be a delicious one. <laughs> Thank you. Tell us about the Barrantes voice system. So the Barrantes voice system uh, is the result of my many, many years of teaching uh, multi-octave voice. Uh, and uh, I started in France, and then I moved to East Coast at Duke University for 15 years, and then I moved to CalArts on 207. And it's a system uh, for uh, helping and and uh, encouraging performers to be to be expressive and well connected and grounded and strong with their voices. And it is contained in this wonderful book. Yes, that's my book. Yes, Voice Made Visible, which just came out two months ago. Wow. Yes, I am so by Routledge actually. I am so glad that this is is available uh, as as a resource to learn more about the power of a voice. Yes, yes. Yeah. yeah. It's very timely. It's very, very timely. So just to, to, to help us visualize what unfolds in in the studio, how how would you describe what what, what happens? in your work with actors using this system and, and, and the objective of the system? We are talking of actors, but in reality also, you know, in Europe, in, in France, I'd lived for many years in France, I gave regular workshops in Paris and in the South where I used to live and in Europe uh, for people who were curious about their voices mm -hmm. and of self-development I think for me the clearest and the most fortunate application is to performers, people who are in the world of a spectacle, whether they are singers, uh, actors, voice actors, uh, in, and dancers. Um, why? Because the system encourages the discovery and the un unraveling and the unfurling of the human voice. The mm. human voice understood if you look at the, at the keyboard of a piano, mm -hmm. that's how many notes we do have each human being, and even more than five, six octaves. But the truth of the matter is that here we are speaking, and since we got that amazing shortcut to say, uh, I'm so happy to be here, Melissa, talking with you. Mm -hmm. If I was an infant who didn't have those words and I, I, I was happy being in your company, I probably would be uttering sounds, all sort of sounds like, I don't know, just to give you a, a little anecdote to, to make some, some kind of visual expression. I might go, because I don't have the words to say, I'm so happy to be here with you, Melissa, <laughs> you know? Mm -hmm. So that, that universe, it belongs to the patrimony of, of the individual. Mm. So the key here is how can we go back and rescue all that material that we had at, at available to, to our larynxes and our environment and make, make sense with it in terms of connecting to emotion. 
So there's there's a a return to to those sounds that that yeah. we that we don't use because we've replaced them with words. Yeah, because it's it's handier. I mean, we are very intelligent and very capable to have language, and the moment that we can say it with language, why to use all the all the sensorial, emotional, uh, expressive means that we used to have if we didn't have the word, you know? Like, again, I go back to the infant. Mm -hmm. The the child, when he's born, is it, 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 it hears things, it, 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 it hears inner things, it experiences, and, and it can only utter the first word when he, the larynx of the infant drops. Mm. And, and there is another an, another interesting anatomical and physiological element attached to this. The first word can happen the moment that the suction reflex and the breathing reflex get divorced. Up until the moment that the child uh, is, 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 is not ready to, to, to talk, to utter the first syllable, consonant and vowel, the suction from the mama's uh, breast and and the 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 breathing is available at the same time can breathe and swallow at the same, at time. The same time but then the larynx the process of growing around eight nine ten months when the larynx this descends then the first da 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 or ma ma happens mm -hmm. and then it's going to begin to to develop and make ma ma da da moon or whatever yeah uh, and then therefore it doesn't need the all those sounds mm -hmm. but the 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 objective here is that the performer is interested in connecting with the audience through through stories and certainly through emotions and so it's a way to rescue and bring bring to the surface of that that all that world which is kind of a little bit subterranean mm. because we don't need it to communicate on the daily basis and it gets very sophisticated as we grow older uh, but the risk is that it gets stale and it gets faked and it just becomes totally colonized the world of sound becomes totally colonized by the word by the and that word. is one of the one of the chapters is the decolonizing decolonizing sound sound because the word prevails so in your work with actors what have you noticed in terms of their response to to this experience of returning to their original sounds? I will say surprise, hmm. wonder, empowerment, confidence, risk-taking, hmm. and uh, persuasion. 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 Yes. Persuasion. But Stretching. Yes, stretching. yes, that they, you know, it happened with Obama. Si se puede. Of course, of course, si se puede. <laughs> si of se course, puede. we can. Yeah. We can if you want. We can if you pray. And I, I'm not religious, but, mm -hmm. but I know what praying is because I pray. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, and performers are people of prayer because you want to incarnate somebody you are not. you hoping to become the other. And make sense and and trick the audience so that they believe you. And in this process of investigating what needs to be investigated to incarnate that character to tell a story, they're learning about themselves as well. Yeah, I love your use of the word incarnate because, uh, as as you know in Spanish. Encarnar, Encarnar is to put flesh into something. It's carne, flesh, and to in. Mm -hmm. And yes, it's exactly that. Incarnate is giving flesh to the soul we carry. And, you know, as I said before, uh, the voice is the muscle of the soul, I think. And, and, uh, and, 
the actor, the performer has to incarnate, has to make tangible, mm -hmm. hence voice made visible. Mm -hmm. I give a certain places where you can go to find certain sounds, circumventing, uh, circumventing, going, bypassing mm -hmm. inner worlds, discourse, intellect, but just physically, sound-wise, breath-wise, go into that place. It's like a passport. It's like using a password mm -hmm. in order to go, to incarnate that that emotion, that potential human being that speaks like this or speaks like that. To go in. It's a passport. And so as open as actors are to experiment and, and go in, when they're, you know, Returning, to, 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 to use your words, returning to those sounds, those original sounds. Uh, and, and they've had for years, like the rest of us who've uh, been colonized by the word, as you put it, the challenges, the challenges bring up things that have been put away. Yeah, yeah. How do you navigate that in, in the studio? Well, with a very, very strict structure. So, because they are going to be surprised. They are going to be, some of them, some of us might be in shock. What? What did I just hear myself uttering? And so I need a very specific, clear structure, the text, mm -hmm. paradoxically enough. <laughs> Because we are talking of sound. At the base is sound. It's like magma. You know, it's like the cover of the of the book. Is yeah. is that is that that magma with yes. like the red of, of your uh, of your logo, uh, yeah. and that is magma. And then how you shape it? Well, it's almost like you need to cast it into certain elements. And that's for me. They need to have a text that is available to them that they know by heart inside out. They need to have. Uh, an energy in the body that again is in the book also is a chapter uh, is returning back to childhood you know this game we used to play there's two games that they have essential in the development of the child which is spinning around on your own axe mm -hmm. why because that's the way you begin to realize oh i'm controlling the world around me yes you know you get giddy yes. you get but and the world is still spinning but i'm I did it. I made it happen. Yes. And now the world is spinning around. And the other, that is the one that I use in sessions in the class and the technique, which is green light, red light. Mm. They need a very specific body attitude, body presence. That is not, they cannot attend those sounds if, if I'm just like this, like I am so comfortable right now. No, if I was on stage, I couldn't be like this. No one will pay attention to me like this. If I was on a stage, I will need to find in myself the spirit of red light. I'm just slightly tonifying my abdomen so that I'm not just myself. Mm -hmm. I don't want you to see it. I want you to perceive it as an audience. Okay, a Asian theater deals with these techniques. I studied, I studied no theater and I studied at, uh, theater anthropology mm -hmm. because I'm fascinated by the difference between the East and the West. And the, West. the East theater techniques deals with the divine, with the spirits, with ghosts. The West deals with psychology, with problems with in the interrelationship and the disasters or the joys of interaction. Two very different. Mm -hmm. uh, we bank on the daily, on the West. On the East, you, you bank on the fictional body. Hmm. There is very specific uh, corporal techniques. And that's, we have it, green light, red light. That's why it's, uh, for kids it's so, it's so um, fulfilling. Yeah. Because there again, you shift, you shift your mind, you shift your body. You you go into a different world. I'm not moving. <laughs> I'm not moving. You cannot see me moving because I don't want to start again from the departure line. Okay? That is the structure. The body needs to be in fiction. The mind needs to have news. Mm. And I mean news, 
new as news you know mm -hmm, mm -hmm. what happened with news you stay with the news up until the moment you don't stay with them because it does doesn't captivate your imagination or it's too much and I need to go away I can't take it the same happens for an audience you know the moment the actor loses his or her news or their news the audience gets lost no interest they go into oh I need to buy tomorrow bananas and apples <laughs> to do this and planning, flour planning planning except planning it's like left hemisphere <laughs> you know ba, 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 ba. Uh -huh. okay so as long as you got fiction you got news and then you know what emotion you are dealing with and what are you saying what lines are, have you learned that's how I that you, then you can rescue that doesn't matter what material uh, I work with five different voice materials okay. or textures I call them textures because they are tangible mm -hmm. uh, poetically tangible voice is not tangible mm -hmm. but that's why I pursue it I'm persuaded that the voice can be, can be made visible. visible. So the, vo the voice can be, uh, if, if, we, if you go from down, from, if I stand up, uh, if I stand up, mm -hmm. from my pelvis down is water, my pelvis is earth, my torso is wood, my head is metal, and above my head is air. air. Those are the five, the five qualities of, of of sound, of vocal sound that the human being, regardless of uh, uh, ethnic, uh, race, uh, age, gender, uh, attributes, we all have sound. Mm -hmm. Then we got a huge, a plethora of diversity of languages. But what unites us is like blood types. There is those blood types and no others. Uh, and we all do have blood. Well, the same is with sound. Before, before the signature of the region or the nation that you were born, that nation, 400 years, it didn't exist as a nation. And 400 years from now, who knows where it will be as a nation, mm -hmm. puts the signature. But sound, everybody's got sound. That, that's Unifying. Yeah. It's, it's like, like we breathe. We are animals. We are human animals. Mm -hmm. And the human animal, yes, he's got sound, but he's got the sophistication of no other animal to have language, even though now we are discovering that whales, that birds, they do have language. They communicate. They have systems of communication. It's not as sophisticated probably as we, we are. And look at the mess they put us because we are so sophisticated if we look at the world today. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think that's for me, that's for me, I mean, I'm being maybe a little dramatic, but I think languages separates us. Hmm. Sound unites us. Music unites us. Music for Rhythm sure. Rhythm unites us. Because mm -hmm. there are things, they are not quality. They don't qualified individuals in their in their own own signatures. Is there? Is there? We got the heart beats, then we transmitted. This we have sounds. So for me, that's what unites us, mm -hmm. you know. And then I work with five emotions, because there's different schools as to how many emotions we are with, uh, we deal with. But five, I look at my hand and I say, perfect, I've got already five <laughs> textures, uh -huh. which comes from my studies that I did with acupuncture many years ago. And he gave me the, I think there is a place, you know, in acupuncture there is, uh, there is source points that if you, if you put the needle in the right, it diversifies, it allows the, uh, the currents of elect, uh, electricity, el elect uh, electrical currents and, mm -hmm. and energetic currents to go and bifurcate and open it's like it's like open up the way yes it's like channels in a city mm -hmm. uh, channels of water what you call uh, dikes mm -hmm. you know you go you can go out you can go down so that gave me the image of of body source those five body sources and so i look at my hand and i say okay five emotions uh, uh, Ekman is a, is a social psychologist that uh, studied that in all over the world, all different all different groups of, of individuals recognize five emotions. All, all no distinction, mm -hmm. and that's why I go along with that. Because again, is is something objective about it? Something unifying? Something universal? Mm -hmm. You know, we all do have blood. 
and f the types of the blood are all the same. And we all do have sound. Sound. And the sound, it's not that it's the same. The basics are the same. But then, of course, there is, there is uh, qualifications. Yeah. Well, I, I, I would like to share how, by being in that same community, CalArts, and having the opportunity to meet with the See, actors yeah. that are going through this experience, this journey, I've, I've had interesting um, moments of reflection as a result of what happened in studio. Mm -hmm. yeah. And without divulging names or anything of the sort, I, I want to share a, a particular instance that, that has stayed with me. Um, I remember, uh, and this student has graduated, um, but I remember when uh, in, a, in a voice class, the experience was so intense that uh, she was sobbing. And it led to us having a conversation about what happened in that moment. You know, what was revealed in that experience of getting in touch with all these sounds. And it really moved the conversation mm -hmm. into places that had not been visited before. Yeah. On another occasion, um, having more practice in this voice class, um, you know, we're in session, in conversation, and in the middle of the conversation, she screamed. And what happened after that scream was powerful. Mm. Not that the scream wasn't, you know, but, yeah. but the depth of the conversation yeah. following that scream. Mm. And it, it made it made very clear uh, to me how important it is to to notice what body work can do. Hmm. To really pay attention to yeah. what body work can do to reveal ourselves to ourselves. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's the that's the duty of the actor. I mean, that's why it's. Of, uh, or any performer or any art form for that matter mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. is is digging is giving voice to something that it, is not even articulable as words or language necessarily yeah you know a poet uh, yeah. uh, uh, a filmmaker a musician mm -hmm. but it always entails that self that that kind of dormant thing that we put at some points in our lives because we have to and we need to and it's not the time but then on our process you need to face it uh, or some of us or even if sometimes it surprises us without even we want uh, ourselves wanting it yeah. uh, but it does create that connection that maturity that maturation mm. that individuation that we seek as we grow older Right. So, yeah. So, so there's an opportunity to discover more and more. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because like I said, these sounds that I, I, I give my toolbox to my students to explore, uh, is going, is going to, to reveal, to unravel. It's as if you, it's as if we had certain sounds during our life and then we, we kind of muffled them up. Mm because they are not useful for the daily communication. We got the language. We are so sophisticated animals, you know? So sophisticated that we are perverse, actually. That's where I think perversity comes. I don't think animal kingdom has perverse animals. Mm. They just do what they have to do. Yes, they kill another animal. Why? Not because they were nasty three weeks ago when they were drinking water. 
is because they need they need to eat, right? right. But we are perverse. We we got that quality mm -hmm. as well as going to the moon. We can be perverse, yeah. you know. But all those sounds we put ravel, mm -hmm. and so the toolbox. I tell okay, this is how you can unravel if you want to. If you want to. If you want to. No, no one needs to make the sound unless they want to. Do you want to go to Paris if you don't want to go to Paris? That's what I say in class. <laughs> Do you want to, maybe you just want to stay in Valencia. It's totally fine. There is a plenty of things to do. Yeah. But maybe you are not the type that just wants to stay in Valencia. Maybe you want to go to New York <laughs> or go to Timbuktu. Mm -hmm. And if you want to go to Timbuktu, make sure that you give yourself the means to go to Timbuktu. Yeah. And you're going to have anxieties and sorrows and joys and you're going to miss friends. But you are also going to make new friends. You're going to discover new food. You're going to be different, speaking the language. You're going to feel yourself differently. Yeah. And so if you want, mm -hmm. it's there. What great metaphors. The, 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 the just paint that picture of discovery of, you know, just going in yeah. and taking risks. You know, uh, artists are such uh, uh, risk takers. I, I, I admire and I'm inspired. Yes, yes. By that willingness to discover more and discover more. Yeah, because we know that there is something that we cannot articulate. You know, when you see a sunset, that's, who can match that? But I need to find the poetry of it, or I need to find the light on it on a, on a, on a aqua watercolor, or I need to find the music of it with a flute or with a yeah. string quartet, yeah. or I need, I, need, I need to become someone else saying some words because that sunset... I mean, and I know there's a lot of pollution in L.A., but those orange of L.A. sunsets that happen, I mean, they are very, very different. And I'm sure some of it is due to the sulfur of the pollution, yeah. but they still touch your soul. And if you want to voice them, if you want to, to write a poem, you need to sit down and write. You need to unravel those sounds because you are not going to be able to do it with your regular voice. Mm -hmm. I doubt it. Mm -hmm. You might be, but I doubt it. And so you want to you want to expand. You want to look for other alternatives. How can I say that that Tuesday sunset mark me? You know, mm. and we all do have certain sunsets mm -hmm. and certain sunrises. Mm -hmm. You know that they are unforgettable. Well, th th the same applies to sound. There is some sounds that we know they are there, but how do I attain them? Yeah. So I give yeah. them the tools to explore that. To explore. You know, I can't help thinking about um, the challenges that may show up for someone who belongs to communities that for generations learn to hide emotions from themselves and others you know we don't talk about that we don't have time to talk about it it's a luxury to feel your feelings mm -hmm. i'm not yeah. gonna yeah. you know yes and so how that would show up in that process of discovery of reconnecting with those original sounds you know that predate word yeah yeah um wow and to and to jump into that, even uh, with a with a long history of muting, yeah, muting uh, certain topics. Yeah, yeah. Well, I I think at the basic cornerstone, there needs to be longing and desire to go there whether it's with the music or with the filming or with the writing or mm -hmm. with whatever the expression and the feel of art is. Mm -hmm. um, that's why I've got my doubts about mandatory, compelling, I mean, obligatory attending. But mm -hmm. as a student in the art form of performing, then you already know that you're going to be looking at things that they are not necessarily pleasant, Right. you know? Particularly because, of course, we got all this, particularly in the West, you know, like I said, psychology complexities 
and traumas. I mean, our theater is based on trauma. <laughs> Honestly, I'm talking of the West, you know. Mm -hmm. And before the West became developed, it was about the de about the Christian God, which also a lot of atrocities happening around that, as opposed to the Eastern theater, which is is a is poly form. I mean, it's mm -hmm. not just one God necessarily, you know. Yeah. I'm thinking of India, I'm thinking of uh, Chinese deities, etc. Uh, and, and that takes you to a different place. But there needs to be desire to, to bump into the unknown. To bump into the unknown. Yeah, you need to want to do it. That's mm -hmm. why people go to therapy, right? Mm -hmm. I want to find out how many of my other Raphaels <laughs> haven't really tended to. Yeah. Rightfully so too, because I need to get w with my daily life and survive. It takes a lot just to live the day. It does. Uh, you know, but we spoke earlier on about about what COVID did to to us. A lot of things, and a lot of trauma, a lot of confrontation. You know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And we were every single human being on the globe. When you think about it, we were under the same veil, and that. That's pretty amazing. It's pretty amazing. Pretty amazing. Interesting uh, that you would say veil. Mm -hmm. Well, it's almost like if you know, phew, like a, yeah. a really like a, a, a organza veil fell onto the world, and we are all surrounded by it. No distinction of class, of a, of not religions, genders, nothing, and uh, and what it did to us on that circumstance. So you need to have that. That. Panache of say, I'm going for this. I'm you know, going for I know it. I'm hurting. I know I'm hurting here. Mm -hmm. uh, and I, I mean, I often say, you know, if you got a, pa a pain on your on your right uh, behind here, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. say, okay, well, I better go to a specialist of my kidneys. I think, you know, but we are hurting here. Yeah. And we postpone it. Yes. We postpone it until until the balloon just goes, and then. The avalanche happens. <gasps> All yeah. at once, the yeah. whole thing comes to you. There's yeah. no f that fell, and it looked beautiful and very contained. It just takes somebody on the mountains to say, echo, 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 and fell, yeah. you know. Yeah. And that that is what, I, that's why I want a very clear structure for the performer so that because he's going to be dealing with all these different five emotions at any given moment, that there is not avalanche. You just look at it. It's like opening Pandora's box. Every so many weeks, you need to, as a performer, mm -hmm. you need to open Pandora's box. Right. Because how are you going to confront this uh, scene on the kitchen when you say, and this, and you said, and you didn't? You need to dig on that in order to, for the audience to suspend this belief. You need to know how much stuff, organic matter, is on that Pandora's box. Mm -hmm. And if you don't open it, avalanche. Avalanche. Well, avalanche is for sure what happened to many, many, many people worldwide yeah. during the pandemic, particularly during the, the time when we were more strictly quarantined. And so for, for those who, prior to the pandemic, avoided feeling their feelings, uh, acknowledge their feelings, address their feelings, it was a time of throbbing. And quite an avalanche, mm, you yes, know. Yes. And I thought it was interesting that you used the word veil uh, to refer to how that experience covered us all. At the same time, when I think about veil at that, you know, during that experience, it was pulled away. Yeah, yeah. For many people, it was pulled away because they were forced to see what's happening inside that was being avoided for so long and without a, a sense of support uh, because connections were compromised when we are, you know, quarantined. You know, it was difficult to sit, to be with that kind of discomfort. Um, so the veil was pulled in that way in other ways too, but for someone that that was going through that, if you had an opportunity to to see them, to meet them, to support them, what would you have said to that person that's throbbing because they they are 
they're bombarded by that avalanche of emotions that had been dismissed, ignored for so long. Mm. Yeah, I, I, I hope I don't sound facetious if I say what I enjoy doing most is to play. I'm a performer, right? I'm, I'm a director too, but I'm an actor. I've been an actor for many years. And it's about playing, it's about incarnating, it's about becoming the other. I will say, do you want to play? Hmm. And if the person says yes, then we are going to play. And this, uh, we are going to establish the rules of the game so that we can play the game together. And then say, okay, let's just go for it. Uh, but we are going to play. And, and we are going to shift the mind from our daily daily presence, daily body, mm -hmm. into if it's poker, then I play poker. Mm -hmm. I'm not playing canasta, I'm not playing uh, bridge, I'm playing poker, it's like tennis. If I play tennis, I put my attire for tennis. I should, it will help, it would not help me if I, I can't play tennis, I play tennis like this, but it helps me if I've got my shorts, my singlet, my stuff, right, my racket right. and stuff. Knowing that the rules of the game allows you to be free. Free? And, yeah, because because you take the ego out in playful. When we play, we obey the rules of that particular, whether it's parchise or poker or whatever, roulette. Mm -hmm. We are playing roulette. That's what you play. You go to that and then hope for the best, you know. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, you, you, that gives you the freedom. Then I'm playing roulette. I know that I've got these squares or this. If I put it in the, in the conjunction of these lines, it's for four. If it is, it's for eight, etc. The same for theater, the same for therapy. You need to shift your mind. Yes. Where am I, right? Where am I? Mm -hmm. I'm in the therapy session. I'm in the church session. I'm in the family with the boundaries. It's about rules. Yeah. And the performance is also rules so that you can play and hopefully become and believe that you are becoming the other. Not about duping. I know we are tricksters, but it's not <laughs> about duping. But yeah, I do want you to believe me. And at 7.29, my cue says, he says, blah, 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 and he's in a state of anger. And how do, if I pretend I'm angry, but I'm not angry, I need to give you the signs of anger. Mm -hmm. I, don't pre I don't need to be angry, but mm -hmm. I need to give you the signs. That's what the technique comes in. Yeah. The signs of anger yeah. or of tenderness or of enjoyment, of, or of fear, whatever the emotion is. Mm -hmm. So, do you want to play? And hopefully the person will say yes, and I say, that's what I know how to do best, yeah. so let's go. Yeah. Let's jump into the... Playfulness. Yes, just jump into the water. And play, playfulness uh, can include sound. Oh, in my case, it does. Every, every, every morning from 9 to 12, I've mm -hmm. got two sections. That's what we do, sound. sound. And how to, how to make you feel strong and grounded and, mm -hmm. and uh, expressive mm -hmm. and, and you know my system is about human voice and the 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 grit the substance mm -hmm. of the voice of the, the voice. truth in it yeah um, yeah well to stay in the in the theme of the pandemic within it many people found their voice hmm reconnected with their voice uh, also supported by a sense of community mm -hmm. particularly given that so many social justice movements mm -hmm. re-emerged mm -hmm. mm -hmm. and now in this post-pandemic time when we're still recovering and learning about you know the the new way we move in the world there are still social justice movements mm -hmm. where people are giving voice to long-standing emotions, you know, that m maybe now they're freeing themselves to yeah, yeah. acknowledge, express, uh, scream about. Mm -hmm. What are your thoughts on that? About giving voice mm -hmm. to something that... Mm -hmm. I think it's essential. I think it's essential, but I'm going to be also very liberal on to what finding their voice might mean mm. because it might be not necessarily 
like in my field using your voice, but it might be cutting patterns on, on costuming. Mm -hmm. It might be creating, dealing with light or creating architecture. I don't know, you need, I think it's important, very important and essential to find what is your voice. It might be a guitar, I don't know. Just think of whatever really, it might be becoming a topographer, I don't know. Mm -hmm. But yes, we need to find our voice because that's gonna give us substance to move on yeah. and, to, and, and to be curious and play. Curiosity and playing is, is not so different, right? Yes. Uh, but in my case, it's about sound. Mm -hmm. In my case, uh, uh, finding your voice is finding your voices. It's not just one voice, it's many voices. And constantly in motion because mm -hmm. the voice is not a static instrument. Mm -hmm. I carry it in my body, we carry it all on our bodies and it moves at the moment you utter it is gone mm -hmm. and and mm. we move we move it's very it's very impermanent uh, the emotion and and when you got a run of two weeks run of a play and you're saying the same lines you cannot say them on tuesday the same as us on thursday it's impossible yeah. time has gone by yeah don't even try it but just know yeah. That's, that that's going to change. Be prepared. That be open for the news to change. And remember that at the beginning of the conversation, I mentioned two two pillars: fiction in the body. Mm -hmm. Your body cannot be the same on mm -hmm. stage as is off stage. Otherwise, you don't attract the eye of the of the viewer, and your mind cannot be like normal it is. You need to. You got certain things to say and not to say, and you need to fertilize your your imagination. Oh, I love that. Fertilize your imagination. Yeah, you need Bring to put, something new. Then you need to put compost and mm -hmm. stuff, you know, in your imagination. Mm -hmm. What makes you tick? It might be the smell, it might be the tact, it might be images, mm -hmm. it might be sensations, it might be, you know, uh, uh, audition, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, auditive stimulation, etc. Yeah. So, yeah, I think it's important to find what, what makes you tick in your life. And so, then your voices emerge. Yeah. Voices. Yeah, you need first to come in, in, to come to terms to the fact that we've got many voices. Mm -hmm. Let's I'm, free them, let's free them. Yes, yes. So that means bumping, sometimes bumping onto things that I don't want to bump, and other things that's, oh my God, I'm so lucky to have this that I can play with, you know? Yeah. Uh, but I'm not the same when speaking in English that when I speak Spanish, that when I speak French. Mm -hmm. I'm trilingual on, on all of them, but I know I experience Raphael differently. And and uh, the same applies to, to if I speak on earth, if I speak on wood, if I speak on broken wood, if I speak on, uh, on, uh, on metal, yes. you know? Yes, so, yeah. yes. The different tonalities. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. The difference of saying, for example, the line um, transforming the world through reflections. That's broken wood for me. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, transforming the world through reflections. Now it changes to soft wood. Transforming, transforming the world through reflections, Melissa, or Earth, transforming the world through reflections, or metal, transforming the world through reflections, <laughs> or water, transforming the world through reflections can offer you so many, dot, dot, dot. Mm -hmm. So there I'm playing with different beings. I don't call them characters. I don't like to call them characters because often, often my experience, and I've done a lot of auditions, a lot of recruiting, a lot of uh, experience listening, it tends and seeing, a lot of actors think a character is something you put from outside in. Oh. I prefer to think is an identity, is from inside out. If I speak to you like this, all sort of things, if I begin to believe on it, can happen. Mm -hmm. And I'm not sure how will I define this person right now. 
but I'm enjoying it. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's rather than have an, uh, an outside characterization, yeah. which is, I mean, it, it, it helps some people, you know, but I prefer to look from inside out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. If someone lonely in the middle of the pandemic had the opportunity to play with you, liberation would be at hand. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh. It was difficult, though, you know, because the mics will saturate mm -hmm. uh, often with mm -hmm. the sounds, you know, particularly with the screams or uh, extraordinary, extraordinary sounds like air or water. Uh, and we couldn't, it w I, we, you will hear the first three seconds or four seconds, but by the fifth, this, the mic couldn't pick it up. It yeah. was too much information for yeah. the mic, wow. acoustically. What a challenge to teach during that time. Yeah, but you know what it did to me? It brought me this close to you, because I was looking at the, at the uh, it was very much one-to-one. -one. Mm -hmm. I could look to you. I cannot go in real life this close to you, you know what mm -hmm, I mean? Mm -hmm. But with the screen, I could be this close to this to the student and wow. that didn't disrupt my 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 teaching and the learning process from the student either how interesting it, isn't it yes I, I, I don't decide I don't decide to go back to that either but that's one aspect that I thought that was fascinating because mm -hmm. I could see the so close up it was constant that's why some some students we allow them to black out yeah because it was I mean when you think four, five, six, seven, eight hours. Yes. So some of the students yes. on the screen. Yes. And then you say family time that you, know, you are talking to New York or whatever. The so screen true. became became a big monster. So true. Well, you know, my life at another school, where the one where I teach, um, teaching virtually also stretched. <laughs> it stretched me. You know, because there's so many things that had to happen differently, just yeah. like you yeah. were talking about coming so close to the screen. And, you know, inviting people to feel free to shut down the camera. Yeah. You know, f for me, it was the equivalent of when in person, in class, with people who are training to become therapists, uh, there are moments, I just had an epiphany, just like in your studio, in voice class, sometimes students can be so surprised by what comes up and could possibly end up sobbing. Mm -hmm. Someone who's training to become a therapist, in class, there are some really emotionally charged moments where someone uh, you know, is, is having really a challenge staying seated. And they're free to leave the room if they need to. Mm -hmm. Or if they can stay in the room to do what they need to do in the room to... To gather mm -hmm. themselves. Yeah. You know, so the virtual version of it was please shut down the camera whenever you need to. Mm, yeah. And I used it, uh, and I said to them, just think as voice acting. Mm -hmm. Just, uh, we don't need your image. Let it just, see, just you just putting your voice mm -hmm. to, a, to, to a, a cartoon or to a, a, a game or something. Yeah. Just, we don't need the image. Yeah. And it was, it, it did help. It did help. Yeah. Yeah. You, you you have to get very, very creative in unusual circumstances. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we're playing. Yes. We're playing. Just like in, in your work, therapy definitely involves playing, uh, inviting someone, accompanying someone in the process of reconnecting with playfulness mm -hmm. to heal from pain. Mm -hmm. So I... I I see the parallel process. There. Oh yes, definitely. The whole time I've been at Cal Arts, Rafael, I have been noticing so many uh, parallel processes between, you know, the work that that that's done uh, 
throughout the different schools and definitely in relation to the work I'm learning to continue doing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's really interesting. And then to learn about the language of, of that work. Yeah. You know, so that, you know, I can be in conversation with an artist using the language that they use. The, you know, I, I, I often invite students to wonder about, well, how might the wisdom from life in theater support you outside That's of theater question. work? Yeah. You know? Um, and now I want to pose that question to you and, and also in relation to your work with dancers. Mm-hmm. who rely so much on the body's language to then now be with you mm-hmm. using sound. They, for the most part, they get they are perplexed about the, the possibilities mm-hmm. and, and they are a little shocked by the fact that no matter who they are, they do have a voice that for one reason or another hasn't been encouraged mm-hmm. or, or, of, or, yeah, or encouraged in, in, their, in their way of expressing themselves. Uh, and so it, it takes a little bit of uh, extra longing, extra desire, because they are very well versed on how to use their 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 bodies mm-hmm. and the very at ease, mm-hmm. but all of a sudden they realize they got another muscle, their voice, you know, and they can see that it can propel them into territories that up until recently or up until this moment that they began to use their voices, it has never been encouraged or right. or uh, accepted. Right. Uh, and yet now, fortunately, with, with you know, with the state of the arts, the, the interdisciplinarity of the arts, there are many choreographers, many dancers that are now requested to to sing or to to say or to speak or to declaim, and uh, and to express themselves vocally. Yeah. And so some of them, the most avid ones, the mm-hmm. most curious and risk takers, uh-huh. they go for it. But there is a good percentage that, naturally, so you know. Yeah. They, how, and it takes a little time to for them to trust me. Mm-hmm. Uh, I I work with dancers for many years, and the best results is from when when dancers are in my studio, because that's what they want to do. It's not because it's mandatory, right? Or or, or, uh, or yeah, yeah. That's that's the key, because then it becomes just a curricular thing mm-hmm. that is being imposed, and it's very. F- vulnerable making because it's your voice yeah. it's your soul yeah it's your emotions yeah and on top of it you have been muted you have been muffled you haven't been encouraged to say anything may i ask you don't even put mm-hmm. your hand up mm-hmm. on a uh, for the most part on yeah. on on a on a dance session you yeah. know certainly not on ballet mm-hmm. or traditional techniques mm-hmm. over the years i've had conversations with dancers who talk about how movement has been such an opportunity to say what they'd rather not say in words or don't know how to say in words you know so that's been their space to to say it so i i am i'm really curious to to learn more about what you notice in your work with dancers that are giving giving voice but this time with sound not just movement yeah it's 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 very very blatant Mm -hmm. they are those those that they do that is because they got desire to do so so. yeah and i think it's very legitimate not to want to do that either you just to stay on your field of purely strict movement Movement. you know that's fine but there is people that paint and and talk and sing at the same time. Mm-hmm. There is other people that swim and do figures in the water, and other people swim and they just do meters and meters and meters swimming, and other people swim by diving in. Uh, you know, so to each their own. To each their own. And, but my feel, my 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 wish, my longing is about the voice. So if you come into my studio, you're gonna you. I'm sorry, 
you are going to be immersed. You have the, the, the bath is about sound. The bath is about sound. Yes. And when you, when, you, when you are in that bath of sound and, you know, engage whoever is present in, you know, paying attention to the breath and uh, that experience of being present. You and I have talked about this uh, privately. I, I would love to hear you say more about that and especially how it shows up here in in your book one thing one thing more uh that comes to mind because both of us speak spanish uh when we think of inhaling in spanish it sounds like inspiration as in being inspired mm -hmm. And I saw that you wrote about that here. Yeah, it's a whole chapter. Yeah. It's chapter five. Uh, so let's jump into that. Let's jump yes. into that. Oh, it's very simple. I, 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 and I, I say this every day in class. Don't inhale. Let the air cascade in. Let at, at, Just open yourself to letting the air in. Focus on what you give out. Is what you give out... you. Your, your nervous system is going to do it automatically. If you gave out a lot, you're going to take a calmer breath in order to recuperate. But don't go, why? That short circuits your being. Mm -hmm. To think of taking in breath, in a breath, is counterproductive. It short circuits your reflex. It's a passive reflexive action. Mm -hmm. Every time I've been interacting with you, I don't think about taking a breath. Uh, and sometimes I might be agitated, so, uh, you know, and I might even interrupt you, and my breath it gets shorter. But because I'm, you know, mm -hmm. but that's the organic way. Yeah. Now, when you are on a stage, there's nothing organic about it. It's all pure artifice. The stage is like when you play music. You, you cannot just play the, the, out of nothing. You need the score, you need the instrument, you need the technique. The same is for the actor. So if you're thinking of getting breath, it's going to short circuit your being. It's going, to, it's going to camouflage your fiction. It's going to bring you back to stage, to very mundane, very human. And you need to be more than human because you are at 729 you need to give the cue mm -hmm. it, 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 the cue is coming mm -hmm. so you so get it ready but don't get it ready by is let the air let the air in espanol in spanish we say inspira 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 y expira uh -huh. inspira and insp inspira is inhale but it's also get inspired get inspired get and inspired that's the, get the beauty of that mm -hmm. get inspired get inspired is is let it attract. It's all, uh, your body is going to do it. Your mm -hmm. diaphragm is going to do it for you. Mm. You you excel. You say what you've got to say. You sing what you've got to sing. Or you sigh because you need to sigh. So The body is going to do it for you. So don't think of... Yeah. The yeah. same is in yoga. Don't take an in-breath. Let the, let the air cascade in. Attract it. It's, not, it's a magnet. It's going to happen. You know it's going to happen. What a beautiful phrase. Let the air cascade in. Yeah. And and the word let. Yes. Allow. Let. Yes. Allow. Attract. Yes. Free it. Yes. Yes. Oh, so we've been talking about freedom quite a bit in different ways. Yeah. 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 Yeah, because we are very intelligent. Human, the human animal is is very intelligent. Mm -hmm. And so with that goes a lot of knows don'ts do's and shoots and so yeah we need we need that freeing we need that thing i needed freeing. it that's freeing. why i think i'm work on the voice because i grew up in franco militar fascist dictatorship and and uh, i couldn't take it i didn't want to take it i didn't I needed different ways, and it wasn't. That's why I love languages. It, it allowed me to be larger than how I was told I was supposed to be. And here you are, focused on voice. Mm -hmm. What a stark uh, difference from 
living the experience of dictatorship. Yes, in which things have to be in a certain way and only in that way, no mm -hmm. other way, okay? Yeah. That's, that was my growing up. Yeah. Let. Yeah, let. Allow, allow, let. Allow. Yes. The body knows yeah. what to do. Yeah. The body yeah. knows what to do. But we need, some of us need to heal before we can let mm -hmm. and allow. Because mm -hmm. we got so much, so, so many much. layers, so much, so much already, so much in 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 bread. <sighs> Rafael, we could talk so much more yeah, about we'll do it again. <laughs> about we'll do it another time, the breath, another topic, voice, voicing, yes. freedom. Yeah, you know these things that we all need and. Uh, are not exclusive yeah. to artists. Yeah. The art of life, the yes. art of living. It's reclaiming ourselves, right? Yeah. Having confidence and empowering and, and listening who we are and what we need to, we know anyway, we know. That's why we hurt, because we know what, who I am, but I had to be in a certain way most of the time, because the superego and, society and rules I mean it's a, it's a fine balance to, yeah. to maintain yeah thankfully um, worldwide there are so many cultural traditions that are about inviting the voice celebrating the voice you know music you talked about music earlier you know I, I can't help being of uh, uh, African heritage thinking about the many, mm -hmm. many ways in which the voice and the body are engaged in healing ways. Yes, yeah. In healing ways, you know, to, to free ourselves to be authentic. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, I've created at Kalar's House of Voices, which I invite a, a, a number of ancestral vocal traditions in order to remind our, our new our young generations, that once upon a time, we used to gather to sing, we used to gather to heal our people, our village people. I was healed by my village. Then the village became an urban environment, and then a cosmopolis, and then look at the globe today and the mobility of, yes. of us as yes. human animals. You yes. know? And so to remind ourselves once upon a time, we were connected differently. And no, ra not even radio, not even, it was, okay, we've had dinner, we are going to go into the night, let's, let's sing some calm songs. Mm -hmm. Okay, someone is going to get married, let's sing vigorous songs. Someone is mourning, let's cook certain foods, let's yeah. make a gather together and keen together. Yeah. And now it's a different world, but uh, we're still human. We're still human. And the events, the, the collective experience we had for, what, three years has been a strong mm. invitation yeah. to return to connection. Yeah. Yeah. To ourselves and the communities we belong to. And we cannot take anything for granted as no. that showed us either, also. No, no. Yeah. <sighs> Well, thank you, Rafael. Thank I'm you, Melissa. I'm so thankful that we had this opportunity to talk some more. Me too, me too. About the voice and all these layered reflections about it. Thank you. I hope you enjoy I your, some know. of your readings. And we have a lunch one day and tell me what you think. Yes, thank you so much for this. And thank all of you for joining us, for listening to us. And uh, may we all continue transforming the world through reflections. <laughs>